Two humanitarian rescue ships pulled 394 migrants from a dangerously overcrowded wooden boat in the Mediterranean overnight on Sunday. An eyewitness says the operation, which involved German and French NGO ships, lasted about six hours. An overcrowded wooden boat carrying hundreds of migrants was spotted in the Mediterranean overnight on Sunday. At least 394 migrants were rescued by German and French NGO ships Sea-Watch 3 and Ocean Viking in an operation that lasted six hours, according to a Reuters witness. Many on board were seen jumping off the boat and trying to swim as humanitarian workers scrambled to hand out life jackets. It was not clear if there were any deaths or injuries among the migrants who were mainly men from Morocco, Bangladesh, Egypt and Syria. They were eventually rescued in Tunisian waters 42 miles from the North African coast. The witness said their engine had stopped working and their boat started taking in water. Migrant boat departures from Libya and Tunisia to Italy and other parts of Europe have increased in recent months as weather conditions have improved. The International Organization for Migration says more than 1,100 people have died this year in the Mediterranean, fleeing conflict and poverty in Africa and the Middle East. Well, political analyst Achike Chude is joining us now on the news. Hello, Mr. Chude. Yes, uh, good evening. How are you? Uh, good, good to be joining you. Yes, glad to have you. It's been a long time. It has been. It has been. <laughs> All right. So why do you think young Africans continue to make these dangerous crossings? Dangerous and unfortunate. Yes. Uh, because uh, the continent continues to lose a lot of uh, human resources that um, at the best of times would have helped in building uh, the continent. And you know, at uh, the very first time we had this kind of uh, serious uh, migration, that was forced at the period of uh, slavery that lasted for about 450 years. Um, and, and then, you know, some people have posited that uh, this time around, uh, the Africans are willingly going into slavery. Perhaps not slavery exactly, but the end result is the same thing, that uh, we deprive the continent of uh, the best hands to help uh, build the nation. And then uh, they, they do that for on behalf of other nations. But obviously, uh, economic, a lot of the people that are leaving the continent are leaving for economic uh, reasons. There are those that are leaving because of uh, the, because they're internally dis displaced, because of uh, the, uh, uh, the violence and the wars that are going on in parts of the continent. But either way, the vast majority of them are looking for a better life, and they believe that they cannot find it in the continent of Africa. Yes. So the they are willing for, to the, risk the, their the, lives. Yeah, go the, on. The search for a better life. Um, yes, but is it good enough for all the risks involved? We've seen many dead in the course of these journeys. Well, well, well. For those who have taken the risk and they succeeded and gotten over there, and somehow. Um, have been able to make it, uh, sending all kinds of uh, stories about uh, their successes in Europe to those at home, thereby fueling the desire by others uh, to also embark on such dangerous journeys. But I do not think that it is, you know, worth it. The kind of dangers these people are, I mean, go through, it's a horrific, terrible experience. And it's not just what happens in the oceans, but what happens between one country to the other country till yeah, they in get, the desert, you know, to like place, that. yeah. Until they get uh, to uh, maybe Libya, from where they want to, they hope to move from, uh, you know, to Spain. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a horrible experience for those people who have tried it, gone through, you know, the West Africa to, uh, you know, Central Africa, uh, through Cameroon, and I mean, the, the experiences have been horrific for those who are able to come back. They they, they tell terrible tales of uh, being imprisoned in other countries in Africa you know, and uh, being tortured before they were eventually released. And of course, you're not talking about those that are killed by bandits and all kinds of uh, very dangerous people. And then those who end up, especially the ladies, who end up as, uh, you know, sex uh, slaves uh, in some African countries. So it's a horrific, terrible experience. And I do not think, if you ask me, I do not think that it is worth the risk. European uh, leaders have done many things to 
put a stop to this, including giving uh, money to the Libyan government. But there, it seems their strategies are obviously not working. How best can we check irregular migration? No, I, I think the European leaders have also realized that it is not enough to, to just uh, encourage other countries not to allow immigration come to their territories. Of course, we know that uh, there are serious uh, domestic issues associated with that. Uh, there are some of the you know, far-right movements are growing uh, in some of these uh, countries, putting pressure on uh, the uh, political lives of their country. And of course, you know that uh, for those countries that encourage immigration or do not do much about immigration, uh, when it comes to election time, the people are going to you know, put them out because they want them to do something about uh, the immigrants that are coming in droves into their country. So yes, they have spent money, not just in Libya, they have spent money in uh, parts of West Africa, uh, you know, to try to get them to stop people from uh, moving uh, to Europe because of the problems it causes. But it must go beyond that. I think there's a, you know, a, now a realization that um, if nothing is done to pull Africa out of uh, the very severe economic situation she finds herself in, then you're going to continue to see this uh, immigration to Europe. But the onus so is really, it's, the onus is not on the European Union to pull Africa out of her mess. But that's a story for another day. But how can the African Union, uh, what can they do to stop African youth from risking their lives trying to cross the Mediterranean? Well, I, I am glad you actually said that the onus is not, uh, you know, for Europeans to help bail Africa out of our problems. Over the years, there has been a, you know, a recurrent, uh, I mean, there's been uh, this talk by a lot of people, not just, you know, Europeans, but Africans themselves that, uh, you know, unless Africa is able to bail herself out of the economic quagmire and political quagmire she finds herself in, no other outsider, no other person, no other country, or, you know, is going to do it on behalf of Africa. Africa must be surveyed by Africa. So I agree with you, really. Now, what can the African Union do? I think, look, what is the root cause of the migration that we're seeing across the African continent? Uh, it's the deep poverty that um, uh, is blighting a lot of the countries in Africa. It is the crisis of uh, violence and wars and conflicts that we see in many parts of Africa. These are the things that are fueling internal immigration you know, internal migration as well as external migration. So if we can tackle this issue, African leaders really need to sit down, you know, and engage themselves in proper governance of, of the continent. That is the only way uh, they can reduce the influx of, I mean, the, 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 those people who are seeking, uh, taking this terrible risk of, uh, you know, going to Europe and uh, other parts of the world. Uh, outside of that, there is nothing, you know, that can be done. So apart from, you know, short-term measures, apart from making sure that um, uh, organizations, for instance, like in Nigeria, that is responsible for stopping the uh, trafficking in women and children and, uh, you know, people like NATIP, mm -hmm. uh, we would also expect, uh, you know, long-term alternatives. And that is uh, the act of, uh, you know, to, to embark upon, you know, the building of, of, of uh, African economies. Uh, to make sure that uh, they can get, uh, you know, so that they, they build up the economies, bring in uh, uh, factories, and, you know, and then ensure that uh, the vast majority of our youthful population who are in the majority in the continent can be able to get job and do something meaningful with their lives. Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Achike Chude, time would not allow us to continue with this interview. But thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you very much. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.